Hey folks, Technivorous here. I'll give you one guess what we're talking about today. That's right, I'm sure you guessed it. This episode is all about face masks. So when 3D printing a face mask, there are a lot of things you need to consider. Um, and there are some ups and downs, some drawbacks as well. So we are going to talk about them as well as the methods and models I use to print this particular mask as well as the one that I have printing behind me and get a few of them into production for my little town here. Uh, unfortunately, I live in the Midwest where there's not a lot of people who actually believe the virus is real. So in South Dakota, a lot of people are kind of disregarding it at the moment. Uh, we, at the moment of filming this, have around 240 cases and only two listed deaths. Although one of our House of Representative members did die a couple days ago and they haven't since changed the death toll. So apparently here they wait up to five days until they get the paperwork back to change that. So um, the important thing here is that I do believe that it's a real thing. So um, me and a few people that I'm close to and worried about I'm going to ensure that we have at least some sort of protection. And if you'd like to know how to do that for your own friends and family, I will show you right now. Before we get too far into the actual build of this mask, I want to go over a couple of things that are pretty much fundamental to making your own mask using a 3D printer. And the main one is going to be the filament that you use. Now taking a look at these three filaments that I have before you, I have one PETG, that's the purple. There is an ABS in black, and there is a blue that is a PLA. Now all three of these are 3D printing filaments that are pretty common and none of them are really adequate for making a permanent reusable mask solution. Now in this instance I personally did use the PLA. It is the blue PLA. This particular one is from 3DX Tech and it is some very high quality stuff. The problem with PLA is in between the layer lines it tends to trap microbes and that is kind of the exact opposite of what we're looking for here. So while this will be able to be sterilized and reused a couple of times, it is by far not a permanent solution. There are, however, filaments that are perfect for this instance, such as an antibacterial PLA. Now these are, uh, and we're reading straight from the website of one of these companies now, designed with antibacterial properties, or anti, uh, the antibacterial PLA greatly reduces the spread of germs and infections. So basically, what these materials do is strive to make sure that there is no gap in between the molecules, reducing gaps in layer lines and things like that. Now I can sand this mask down all I wish, and there are parts of it that are now pretty smooth which will make it easier to clean and sanitize in the future but another thing of note is even if using antibacterial PLA you are going to want to seal this mask in order to keep the germs from penetrating into the actual plastic itself now there's a couple of ways to do that and some people have different preferences as to which one to use I personally have my own opinions we're not going to get into that just yet because that's a whole different debate how to seal your PLA it doesn't really matter what you use as long as you get a good coating on the outside that can be cleaned and sanitized that way you can get at least as many uses out of one of these non-permanent masks as possible so now that you've decided on a material and chosen whether or not you want your mask to be permanent or disposable and have to print another one every once in a while uh, the next thing to decide is picking which mask you want to print. Now there are a lot of options available and some of them do better than others and let me show you. Now what we have here, sorry I had to switch to the right channel here. So what we have here is the National Institute of Health 3D Print Exchange. Now you can find this easily just by googling National Institute of Health, Health 3D Print Exchange. But the address is actually up here as well. It's 3dprint.nih.gov. And if you come here, there are a ton of models for everything from face masks to face shields to respirators. Now, this site has blown up recently, and there are a ton of options available. Some of them are customizable. This is close to the design that I'm using here, except the one that I'm using also has an outlet for exhaust air. So this is a great place to get examples or prototype STLs to make your own mask and it will provide you with a lot of different options. Some of them are printed to automatically fit with filters that are made and some of them are printed to 
make your own filters out of uh, medical grade air conditioning filters and things like that. So you'll have to read the instructions and pick which one you want. But for me, as you can see here, we are well into the process of printing our second actual mask. The first mask you saw in the preview is not quite completed with finishing yet, but I wanted to show you a step-by-step -step of the first iteration, which was the prototype for the actual development model that I printed while I was dialing in my settings. So this is not it. This is a beautiful model with the settings all dialed in. Now, in order to get the settings right to make the parts fit properly, I did have to adjust some settings in Kira, such as my horizontal expansion. And this was my first attempt where the horizontal expansion was adjusted too much, and that left a couple of holes in the model. And as you can see, the mask is quite a bit thinner and flimsier than I intended, and the pieces don't quite fit as well. So um, this was my first attempt at a cover, and this one as well, the horizontal expansion was off on both of these models. So uh, we did a little bit of adjusting, and after that, the parts fit perfectly, and everything's a lot more solid now. As you can see, there is a large difference in thickness. Now, obviously, this is temporary, um, and this actually came off a old mask that I had laying around. So um, this does need a little bit of adjusting. There is a spring in there so that it pops back after you breathe out. It will expel air and then pop back closed. Now I do need a 25 millimeter O-ring with a 25 millimeter outer diameter to go in there to ensure that it is an airtight seal. And the filter is basically just a filter that's been cut to fit. Um, the piece that I used to cut this filter out of, I can get probably three or four more filters out of, and it was pretty cheap for a medical grade filter. Now, this is the utilitarian part of your mask. This is the most important part. You're gonna want some sort of filter that is approved for medical use. Now, since most of those masks that are for medical use are in use, they're hard to find and they're probably better left to the medical professionals. You can get um, basically uh, air conditioning vent made for hospitals at a reasonable rate. And with that, you'll be able to make a lot of refills or in my case, a lot of filters for single masks. Now, a lot of this model has been sanded really smooth and is ready to be sealed, but I do still have some sanding to do down in the bottom corners here and at some of the seams. So plenty of work left to do. Like I said, the elastic bands need to be replaced and fitted on the other side. And there is always the option of form fitting this to your face. Now being PLA, it is very simple to heat up some water, get a thermometer and heat that water up to around 55, 60 degrees Celsius, which is gonna be about 110, 120 degrees. And dunk the part that you need to form into the water and leave it there for a few seconds. Then remove it from the water and you will see that it is now pliable. Now you're gonna to wanna to let it cool off a little bit before you actually put it to your face and press it to form a seal. Uh, but once you have done that, it's just like a mouth guard where you basically soften it with the hot water and then bite down to put your own personal impression on it. So once that's done, this will form a pretty airtight seal and is very, very highly functional. Now this part does come off and the filter, as I said, can be replaced, but so far, from what I've noticed, wearing this around and testing it out, the biggest caveat I've seen is that it's really hard not to talk like Darth Vader. So that's basically it. it. May not be a perfect solution, but at the very least, if you're some sort of super carrier, it will keep you from coughing your germs all over everybody else. And in theory, with the medical grade filter in there, it should actually work really well as long as you can get a nice tight seal. Now, one other thing that I've played with in order to properly seal it to your face is do print a thin strip about a half inch wide of TPU and adhere that to the inside. And that should not only give you a little bit more suction, but it should also help it grip to your face. Now, lastly, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below, leave a like on this video, and we are gonna have the finished prototype of this complete when it is done. I will show it to you, as well as some of the other masks that we've made in the process. And that's gonna be it for now, guys. Technivorous out. As always, this channel is brought to you by the Spine Patreon supporters. If you'd like to support the channel on Patreon, head over to www.patreon.com slash technivorous.
that's gonna be it for this video as always i am technivorous and thanks for watching don't forget to check out our main channel page where we do a free giveaway for our subscribers every month so far we've given away things like a capricorn ptfe tubing kit and spools of filament so the giveaway videos are always pinned to our main channel page so all you have to do is subscribe and leave a comment on the giveaway video for the current contest Feel free to check out this video right here. YouTube picked it for my content just for you. And if you haven't already, you can hit the subscribe button right here. So what are you waiting for? Become a technivore now. Thanks again. Technivorous out.